Welcome back to the In The Game Room podcast, brought to you by GC Mini. I'm Henry, your host, and today we're going deep, really deep, into Bolt Action version 3. That's right. I'm Ruby. And we're diving into a battlefield element that's more than just window dressing this time around. We're talking buildings. Buildings? You mean I can't just use that conveniently placed barn as a bullet sponge anymore? Well, you can try, but... Let's just say the new rules about HE, high explosives, and buildings might make you think twice about seeking shelter in a flimsy wooden structure when there's a mortar team with your name on it. All right, you've got my attention. So where do we start with all this? It seems like the rule book really separates a pile of rubble from like an actual building. Exactly. The first thing to understand is the difference between what the rule book calls ruins and intact buildings. They're completely different beasts, tactically speaking. Okay, so ruins versus intact buildings. Hit me with it. Think of ruins basically as dense terrain. Great for cover. Exactly. Great for cover, but your troops will be moving at a snail's pace through them. Makes sense. Intact buildings, though, that's where things get a lot more interesting. Intact buildings, huh? So do my brave soldiers need to start bringing along sledgehammers to knock down walls. Thankfully, no need for sledgehammers. Infantry can enter and leave intact buildings, but... But it's not as easy as just walking through the front door. Exactly. It takes specific orders and their movements restricted. It's a bit like navigating a trench system, really. Gotcha. So a little less charge in guns blazing and a bit more tactical maneuver. You got it. It forces you to think about positioning and timing much more carefully. For example, you want your unit to move between floors in a building, maybe even to an adjacent building connected by a wall. They'll need an advance or run order. Just like out in the open. Exactly. So I can't just have Sergeant Steve, you know, run up three flights of stairs to chuck a grenade out the window. Not so fast. Every floor change requires a full order. And don't forget, if you choose to run, no shooting that turn. So bolt action V3 buildings, a little more Band of Brothers, a little less John Wick. Got it. You got it. It creates these really interesting dynamics where even a seemingly small building can become a real choke point. Oh, I can see that. Imagine this. Your opponent has a unit pinned down on the second floor of a house. Do they risk a run order to reposition knowing they'll be exposed to fire? Yeah, nail biter. Or do they hunker down and just hope for the best? Tough choices. Tough choices. And we're just talking movement here. We haven't even touched shooting yet. Oh, right. Because being inside a building, it's got to limit those lines of fire, right? More than you might think. While taking cover inside a building sounds all safe and cozy, it actually limits your firing arcs in interesting ways. Oh, really? How so? Well, think about it. Can't my boys just fire from every window like they do in the movies? Hollywood and their glorious battles. When firing from inside a building, you're essentially limited to those openings. Windows, doorways, that kind of thing. Ah, uh, okay. So range and line of sight. Exactly. Measured from those openings. <laughs> so positioning is key here. Absolutely. Got to find those good fields of fire. You got it. It's all about creating those kill zones, right? Right. Sounds like this could lead to some pretty tense, like almost claustrophobic firefights. Absolutely. Now let's say the enemy is really dug in and those pot shots from the windows just aren't doing the trick. That's when you got to bring in the big guns. You're talking blowing the whole building to smithereens? Sometimes you got to fight fire with fire. With fire? I like that. Or with high explosives. Even better. One of the biggest game changers in Bolt Action V3 is how HE weapons, high explosives, interact with buildings. Oh, yeah. We're not talking suppression fire here. A direct hit with an HE weapon can inflict some serious, I mean serious casualties, on units taking cover inside. Okay, how serious are we talking here? Give me the nitty gritty. So picture this. You've got a squad of infantry, all cozy, inside a sturdy brick building. They think they're safe and sound. Exactly. Go wait. Suddenly, a medium mortar, boom. Direct hit. Uh-oh. Someone's about to have a very bad day. That someone is probably going to wish they stayed home. <laughs> With a medium mortar, you're looking at an HE value of 2d6. Okay, 2d6. You roll those dice, add them together. And that's how many hits. Boom! Directly to the unit inside. Ouch. No saving throws, no cover saves. Nope, they're toast. Brutal, right. But there's a glimmer of hope. Oh. Remember those down orders we talked about earlier? Ah, uh, yes, down orders. Could be a lifesaver, literally. Yeah, yeah. Cuts the number of hits your unit takes in half. So a little tactical forethought with those down orders, very, very useful. Absolutely. It makes all the difference. Between, oh, that was close, 
And, well, there goes the platoon. Oh, exactly. And here's where things get even more interesting. If you manage to score 10 or more hits with an HE weapon that has a value of 2d6 or greater. Okay, 10 or more hits with 2d6. What happens? Does the building just sort of shrug it off? Let's just say it's a bit more dramatic than a shrug. Ooh. We're talking total structural collapse. The whole building. <laughs> wow. The entire building crumbles, taking anything and anyone inside down with it. Talk about adding insult to injury. <laughs> so I guess those brick buildings aren't as safe as they look. Okay. But what about, like, those concrete bunkers? Those things seem like they were built to survive anything. Ah, bunkers. Now we're talking a whole different ballgame. Right. When a regular building might crumble under the might of H-E bunkers, they just kind of laugh it off. They just shrug it off. Like it's nothing. <laughs> to give you an idea, while a regular building might crumble after taking 10 or more hits from H-E, a bunker... It takes a whopping 12 or more hits to bring one of those bad boys down. The 12 hits. <laughs> okay, so those things are tough. What's a bolt action general going to do when they run into one of those? Just keep throwing explosives at it until something gives. You could try that. What? Or there might be a more, let's call it tactical approach. Oh. Remember our fiery friend, the flamethrower? The flamethrower? Ah, uh, yes. That's always a crowd pleaser. But how effective are those against something like a bunker, really? Those things seem pretty indestructible. Let's just say that when it comes to bunkers, flamethrowers, the ultimate key. Really? You see, with a regular infantry weapon, you're pretty much stuck targeting those bunker openings, right? Right, right. But a flamethrower, yeah. with its, let's call it indiscriminate fury, Oh yeah. it can engulf that whole bunker opening in flames. Now that is a warm welcome. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be on the receiving end of that. And here's the best part. You know how bunkers give that juicy two-plus cover save against most attacks? Right, right, right. Well, against a face full of scorching hot flames. Yeah. That cover save, about as useful as a chocolate teapot. So bunkers, yeah, they might be tough cookies, but they've got a weakness. They do indeed. Flamethrowers, the greed equalizer. <laughs> That's one way to put it. All right. But let's switch gears for a second and talk about those times when things get a little more up close and personal. Like, what happens when your troops have to clear a building room by room? Ugh. Close quarters combat in buildings. Now we're getting to the really good stuff. Just picture it. Your squad has fought its way through the ground floor of a building. Okay. The enemy, they're holed up upstairs. Oh, boy. Ready for a fight. So what do you do? Do you charge up the stairs, try to catch them off guard? Risky. Or do you take it slow and steady, maybe use some grenades, try to flush them out? Oh, decisions. Mm -hmm. Decisions. It sounds like clearing a building in bolt action V3, it's a real balancing act. You don't want to get caught out in the open, but you also don't want to give the enemy time to set up shop. Exactly. And remember those movement rules we talked about earlier? Ah, uh, yes. They're absolutely crucial here. No sprinting from room to room like you're in an action movie. Right. Every move has to be calculated. Every doorway yeah. could be a death trap. This is where a cool head and knowing the rules inside and out really makes all the difference. Yeah. Knowing when to hold them, knowing when to fold them, knowing when to use those precious orders to get your guys into position for a good flanking attack. That's what separates the rookies from the veterans. Couldn't have said it better myself. And hey, don't forget, a well-placed HE weapon. Oh, yeah. Still a game changer, even in close quarters. You bet. Just, you know, be careful you don't bring the whole building down on your own head. Right. Always a danger when you're playing with the big boom toys. Well, I think we've covered just about everything there is to cover when it comes to buildings in Bolt Action V3. Any final words of wisdom, Ruby, before we wrap things up? Just this. Buildings, they're not just background scenery anymore in Bolt Action. Right. They're tactical assets. They offer protection, but they can also be incredibly dangerous for sure knowing how they work how to use them to your advantage that's going to make all the difference absolutely words to live by for any bolt action commander all right that's a wrap on this deep dive into urban warfare bolt action style until next time be sure to grab the full v3 rulebook for all the juicy details on buildings and everything else bolt action and keep an eye out for more bolt action v3 deep dives from the team here at gc mini until then happy gaming